All right, a very good evening. I am Dr. Mary, and I'm presenting to you a Leadership and Organization Transformation, the Assignment Module, Briefing 1. So I shall share screen now, and we will move ahead. So at any point in time, uh, if you wish, if you feel the network is not very good, you can just switch off your video and your audio so that uh, the network will be stronger. Okay. So let's just first start off with what is the purpose of this module? Okay, what is the description of what you're going to learn? So leadership and organization transformation. Those three words are so powerful. There is leadership in there about how you're going to lead. There's organization, which is your, your company. And then there's transformation. And transformation is an even more powerful word than leadership because with the right leadership, you will be able to change your organization. And that is what this module aims to uh, bring forward to you. So this unit explores historical, contemporary, scholarly, and research supported ideas about leadership in organizations, particularly schools. So this is for the education sector, which I will handle in the Q&A, right? and shows the irrelevance in actual practice. So sometimes, whatever you are learning, you will see that you need to do a slight change because it is not a company, but it is a school, it's an institution. It covers the meaning of professional relevance and the leadership topics and see how to apply those ideas to their actual work settings now and the future. So just imagine how you're going to learn uh, all these new elements or, or ideas about leadership, and you must be able to put it into practice. What are the learning outcomes? What will the uh, module hope to achieve from you? First, you will gain knowledge and understanding of leadership foundational theories and models. So theories and models are something that you must use in your assignment. You cannot write an essay. You need to write a research topic by using the case study of your school or institution. On completion of this module, students will be able to cultivate a sense of self-awareness through identifying a leadership vision, mission, styles and values. So you will see how you, uh, you will see yourself um, as, a, as a leader. You will see yourself as a person who is going to transform the workings in the organization because you are keeping an eye on the vision and mission. Demonstrate communication skills. So communication is what every leader must have, every manager must have, any, every superior must have. And the purpose of having this great communication skill is so that you are able to interrelate with others. It is not about language. It is about communicating. Whatever you say, can the other person understand? The comprehension is needed. Then comes exhibit responsible decision making and personal accountability. So you are expected to make decisions. So while undergoing the module, you will see how um, a leader needs to be the person to make decisions. You cannot have wavering thoughts. You cannot show that you are unsure. 
you have to prepare yourself. Develop a range of leadership skills and abilities. There are so many characteristics and traits that leaders need. And why? Because you need to lead change. You need to resolve conflict and you need to motivate others. So these are the learning outcomes at the end of completing all your lectures and your assignments. You will see yourself achieving these. Next comes the indicative learning content. It tells you what you are going to cover as a snapshot. So you will have a historical overview of leadership in organizations. You will learn about the typical leadership styles in all companies. Then you will learn about a new view of leadership in organizations, how the trends are changing, right? From the time of the autocratic leadership, it has become a democratic leadership, right? Because we are looking at a, a generation of people who are also very knowledgeable. So it doesn't mean that when you are the leader, you know everything. You need to have this new view of leadership. You will learn about leadership theories, lots of them, about leadership and communication and vision. So vision is what you will see far where your company is going to be, where your school is going to be in five years time, in 10 years time, that's the vision. But the mission is nearer. And then you will learn this fantastic uh, topic of leadership and motivation. And this is one topic where you will find that you can use what you are learning to implement in your organization how to motivate staff. Leadership as a developing capacity. Leadership doesn't stop because you're a leader. There is more to it. It keeps on developing. You will change your style of leadership from, I was mentioning autocratic, then I said democratic. There's one more called laissez-faire. You may prefer to use that kind of leadership. And then leadership, problem solving and decision making. So you will be ready to, to, to be the CEO of an organization who works efficiently. You may be now, but after covering this module, you'll even be better. And then leadership and managing change. A company that is static, that has been running in the same way for many years, is maybe good, but I think you need to keep up with the times. You need to change products. You need to change people. You need to change methods. And here you will see that number three, number three to number eight, all starts with leadership because it is about the person who's going to change the organization. Number nine, formative and summative evaluation issues in education leadership. You can't straight away learn about education leadership. You need to go through the fundamentals of leadership and then you get into educational leadership. What about ethics, integrity and social justice in leadership? Simply put, being fair to all employees. And finally, you will learn about developing an educational leader. You are an educator, you are a teacher, you are a principal, you are a director, but you are also a leader. So these are the indicative learning contents. Next comes to the assignment question, which you are all interested to know how to do. So I'm going to analyze the 
assignment title together with the five parts of the questions you are supposed to answer. First, they give you a scenario. The scenario is um, the institution you work for has been around for 20 years, having built-in habits that have become culture. Not all of them are favorable, but it has been operating that way under the same leadership for the period of time. For how long? For 20 years. A change is very much needed to keep up with the current trends in industry. So you see how you are going to uh, change your organization in a way that you're going to keep up with the trends, keep up with the, with the new methodologies of uh, functioning. Assume the role of a new leader to undertake the task of a transformation for your institution and address the following questions. So the key thing is uh, you are going to be a new leader. A new leader has fresh ideas. A new leader has um, uh, maybe new experiences that we wouldn't have experienced 10 years ago. And so you, you put yourself in the capacity of a new leader and you undertake the task of a transformation. So to transform, right? To change the way uh, work is carried out and address the following questions. So there are five questions. And keep an eye on the word count. For the word count, it says it's between 4,000 to 4,500. So if you have five, you are roughly going to do about uh, 800 words, all right? Eight times five is 40, so you've got 4,000 words. And you keep the 500 for your executive summary, the introduction, and a bit of the conclusion, right? You don't equally divide it. You need to keep some excess on that. So when they give you a word count of 4,000 to 4,005, it doesn't mean you can go over 4,005. The bracket is already given to you. So if you go too much beyond 4,005, you probably have too much of unnecessary information there. If you are below 4,000, it means you have insufficient um, information. So let's take a look at the question. What is the culture in your organization? So I've got a slide for every question. First is you've got to do culture, understanding what, understanding what is culture. The second is what elements of the culture would you like to change? And what steps would you undertake to make the change? So what do you want to change? And what steps you would undertake to make the change in your institution? So here we do not know what is your institution. So that is where you need to put it into the introduction. You need to write in the introduction about this organization that you are referring to for this particular case. What leadership style would you use? Now, so there are two parts to this, uh, three parts. First of all, what are the elements? And then what do you want to change? And what leadership? So the change and the steps are one. What leadership style? The third question is, what are the struggles you anticipate and how would you overcome them? To introduce change, I would say, is a very difficult task because we are so used to the way we have been doing things for 20 years. And now there's a change 
Even when there's a change in a leader, the new CEO has joined. Everyone is worried about what's going to happen. He's going to make some changes, right? So uh, change management is a very important task for a leader. And five, what change strategy would you use for a smooth implementation? So what are you going to do to ensure it runs smoothly? All right, so now I'll take you into the first question. Oh, there's a second part of the assignment question. Begin with a brief executive summary to give an overview of the assignment. I have realized in all my uh, marking that some students are not clear about executive summary. They think it is an introduction, but here it says begin with a brief summary. There must be an introduction. All right. So the executive summary is like um, in a nutshell, what have you written? So basically, you're going to write a little bit about the five questions that you have done. Don't copy all of it and put it here. Your word count will run. You just have to summarize what did you find about culture? What did you do about elements? What did you do about the struggles and motivation and the smooth implementation? So when I read uh, the executive summary, I must know what you have got in your entire assignment. Okay, that's how important the executive summary is. It's like buying a textbook. When you buy a textbook, you turn to the back and there's a summary or a synopsis. And based on the synopsis, you will decide whether to buy the book. So now your executive summary is a synopsis. After reading it, am I going to feel excited that I will want to continue reading? Right? So you have to write it in that manner. So then you must also have an introduction. This introduction is of the organization, the institution. So just a brief summary about what kind of business it is in, higher education, lower education, management. Uh, and then maybe if you want, you can put in an, uh, an organization chart so that when we are reading the, the assignment, we can understand the role of the institution and where are you in the chart you do not need to use actual names all right but for yourself you can put in your name okay because some of it may be confidential then answer the questions and have a strong recommendation for the last question cite all references that you have used okay so the first question is what is the culture in your organize in your institution okay your organization is an institution so you start with an introduction and describe your institution its structure i said the organization chart or who who are the people involved and the overview of the business it conducts then you explain what is organizational culture because your question is what is the culture in your institution without doing the introduction and without introducing what is culture i may not follow what you are writing the introduction can be separate or it can be within your first question so don't, what is it you got to do this is what you call in-text referencing. You are doing a program that is at a very high level. We expect to see lots of this. It is not, like I said earlier, an essay that you write, um, stories that you write, but doesn't have academic content. So these are the academic content that you will have. For example, uh, you want to define what is organization culture. So Shine 1985 defined organizational culture as a set of beliefs, 
values, assumptions that are shared by members of an organization. That is one definition. Another common definition still utilized by many practitioners today is simply the way we do things around here. So let me give you an example of a very simple culture. Um, everyone in your organization is so friendly. The moment you walk into the office, you're wishing, hello, hello, uh, Tan, hello, Lim, hi, Jennifer, hi, Patrick. That is the culture. And then when a new person joins in the organization, they will observe and say to themselves, wow, this company is so friendly. Everyone is uh, so nice. And then that culture will be passed on to me. All right? Then, because that is the way we do things around here. Another culture, a very simple example, is like in, in institutions will be assembly. Many schools are doing away with assembly because it's a lot of students and it takes too much time and it's a lot of organizing. But your culture maybe is that you will have it once a week. You will have a staff attendance or a, or a meeting uh, every Monday. It's a culture, the way you do things around. And even about food for that matter, if you were to, everyone packs their food and comes to the uh, office, there's a pantry and everyone sits around and eats and chit chats. It's culture, all right? Because it is a set of values that you appreciate each other, you share with each other, the friendliness is there. But of course, there are more serious things that we can talk about. Now, these shared beliefs and values are established by leaders and then communicated and reinforced through various methods. The best method is to involve me in that lunch in the pantry. Come, Mary, come bring your food here. So I'll go and sit with you all and I'm having my meal and then I'm learning this new culture. I join in the assembly. I join in the meetings. People learn by doing. And ultimately, shaping employees' perceptions, behaviors, and understanding. They can be transmitted from one generation to, uh, of employees to the next. So when we talked about the assignment question, it is telling you about 20 years, an organization which has been around for 20 years and they have a few built in habits. But what we want you to do for the assignment is to relate it to your institution. Relate it to your institution. So think about your institution. Pretend that it's been there for a very long time. Okay, but now you need to show that it's 20 years eh? because you must connect to the question. You cannot say your, your organization is five years old because then the culture is different. Okay, next part. So this is one of five. This Sorry, do you see this one of five? The first of the five questions. So it's about 800 words that you can uh, put everything in. Second question, what elements of culture would you like to change? And what steps would you take, undertake to make the change in your institution? And what leadership style would you use? So I have identified a few examples. All right. Identify a few areas that need to be changed in your institution. Now, if your institution has nothing that you can change, please create. This is an assignment. All right. It's not a diary. It's an assignment. So you think, analyze and ask yourself, what can I change in my company? Um, even though really it's been there only for the past five years, 
right? So it can be maybe uh, creating a healthier environment. Everyone is bringing in food to eat, but you now want to change it. You are trying to tell everyone, we are going to go on a healthy diet. So whatever food you're bringing, it has to be nutritious. It has, must have all the values. Another example is you used to be having standardized tests and exams. Every class in a particular uh, year is doing the same uh, tests. But now you want to make a change. And the change is no more standardizing. Everybody has to set their own paper. Okay. What about having more outdoor classes? So these are all based on the students. Huh? These two are students. This can be students or teachers. Then what about another change? You want to implement a change that all teachers use technology. Now it is like a choice. If you want, you can use, you can just use the projector, you can use uh, whatever, but maybe you would like to infuse uh, many more uh, items of technology. So go and do some research on what you can change. What about results-based appraisal? In your school, in your institution, college, university, the appraisals are just done on performance. But there's a new ruling. There's going to be a change. All appraisals are going to be based on the students' results. And that will be for the academic staff. And then for the non-academic staff, like the administration, maybe it's going to be based on um, activities or output. Right? So think of what you can change. Another change can be due to hierarchical change. The hi hierarchy of the organization is always seen like this. This is the top management. This is the floor level. So now let's say there's going to be a change in the top management. And because of the top management, the structure is going to change. I'm sure you've heard about departments collapsing collapsing meaning breaking down and joining together two departments becoming one instead of having two heads you're going to have one head now and then you transfer this head somewhere else all right so because of hierarchical changes there can be many kinds of implementation that you can think of then you must do the steps that you would take to implement this so i found this diagram in on the internet about the eight steps of change so i can either if i were you i can put this as a diagram i can look for other kinds of uh, flow charts that show me how uh, to implement the change all right as you know when you want to implement change you must do it you must show there's urgency but it must take a little bit of time you can't say from tomorrow we are all going to be having a new way of doing things. No, it has to come in as news. And then let people accept it, assimilate it, and then they are ready for the implementation. You will learn it in your module. Then comes the leadership. What leadership can be used? Now this, I refer to the portal. And I found that you uh, can look for material under section three, session two. There's one called situational leadership theory. Now, situational leadership, you will learn, is because of the situation, right? When you are asked to take care of um, a department and uh, you are not the leader you are just a junior person in the in the company all right and i'm not talking about the leader i'm talking about a junior staff and uh, the leaders have all gone out for a meeting but suddenly there is a a fire a fire takes place in the department due to some um, uh, mishap 
Now, a person will not say, oh, I cannot do anything because I'll wait for the leader to come. In the meantime, the fire is growing. They will not say, hey, go and call so and so. No, you become a situational leader where you act immediately. You start taking away all the valuables. You start looking for how to put out the fire. You will save the department. So this is a good um, example. You can also go and search on transformational leadership. Transformational is when you first joined the company, you were a very quiet person with lack of confidence, did not communicate fluently. But you had a mentor who you used to follow for all his meetings and all his um, uh, discussions and you started becoming like him. And he also gave you the opportunity to take the lead. He will say, come on, Mary, uh, you can present. And the person transformed. So now look back into what is it you are changing. I've given you some examples here. You don't have to follow this. Please customize it to your organization. All right and see what you can do. Because it just says that this is an institution. If you are in an administrative role, then you don't talk about the students. You can talk about the academic staff, all right? The management. If you are in the teaching line, uh, you can use the uh, students, the teachers, etc. So this is question two. So for question one, do you have any questions? All right, you can ask me later. I'm just pausing to give you a chance if in case you have a urgent question. What about question two? So, sorry, um, Dr. Mary, I've got a question. Is it necessary um, to referring that the institution that I'm working right now? Uh, you must create an institution. If you can use your real institution, but you don't want to give the name, change the name of the company because sometimes you don't want to be talking about the way your company is doing things, right? Right. Yes. Right. So you give a pseudonym. I see. For for my situation is actually I'm not working in a in an institution. Okay. All right. So where, <laughs> what kind of company do you work in? A company you can stay um so they start say startup right but previously i working in several several companies just like um this okay is in business or a charity organization ngo something like right that. okay so for this uh, particular assignment it is good to go and look up an imaginary company go okay. to a website Go to a website and look for information, but don't use their name eh, because then you are giving false information. You change the name, but put in bracket that that is a pseudonym, right? A okay. pseudonym is a, a false name just to cover the identity of the actual uh, name. Okay, company. so 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 we have to use um, a an academic. Academic, yes. Yeah, just yes. like secondary school or even that's school, right. Yes. College. I see. I see. Yes. Okay. Huh? Okay. okay. That's good. Thanks. Then you're preparing yourself uh, in the career in that line. Right. right. Okay. The third question is, what are the struggles you anticipate, and how would you overcome them? So, what are the struggles and barriers that leaders face? Because they're asking you as a new leader, right? So you can look up uh, on what are obstacles, or struggles, and barriers. I've got a few here. These are some of the obstacles uh, that leaders face regarding change. Lack of trust. Your, your colleagues don't trust that your idea is going to work. For example, you say we are going to have a healthy diet, right? Perception that change is not necessary. There are people in the company which is 20 years old will say, why do we need to change? 
there is no need to change. Let's just keep on doing the same thing. Oh, it's so difficult. You want to go and change this and change that. You know how reactions are. So there's a perception that we don't need it. There's a perception that change is not possible because there are some strong uh, old timers who are holding all the key positions and you can't break them. So there's just perception that you are not able to make a change. This is an obstacle, you know, just imagine that it's in the mind of people, but it can create an obstacle. Sometimes change is due to a very high cost, a very high cost because of what you want to implement. Remember I said about the uh, technology, if you want all teachers to use technology, you are going to put a very uh, high bill. Fear of failure. Some of the obstacles for the leader is, I'm so afraid to suggest because if it doesn't work, I will look like a fool. I will look so silly. Loss of status or power. Status again. Some people who are so um, conscious about their position, they don't want any changes. Like I said earlier, the example, merging the two departments. So if I'm a leader there and you are a leader in the other department and the change needs me to collapse the department into one, one hour is going to go. So people say don't change, leave it as it is. Threats to values and ideas. Some people feel threatened that new things are coming in and maybe they don't know how to do it. Technology coming in. Oh, I'm not sure. I've never used a technology. So ideas can sometimes be shot down. Then you've got cultural disagreement, social disagreement, organizational disagreement, especially social, you know, when you move people away from their friends, they feel it. They won't cooperate. They say, no, no, I don't think the change is a good idea just because we are, sep we are all going to be separated. Then resentment of interference. Some people resent interference because I am running my department. How come you are coming in and telling me to change? So you have this attitude, right? Attitude problem. And then I want you to look at the notes. Now, in this um, module, your materials are mostly journals. So excellent materials. I've gone through them. I've picked out for you these few, all right, on how to overcome them. You can just talk about how communication, you must communicate better, how you have to motivate them, and how you need to influence them. Session three, four, and five, all right, in this five, six, and four. So some of the points that you can also search on the net in journals or books or um, just material will be how do you overcome uh, obstacles? So let me pick a few. I've put in a lot of examples here. Let me pick a few. Um, bring people together toward the mission. Your mission is to be the number one uh, school in Hong Kong. Everybody must know that. The vision must be a unified vision. So everybody will work towards making the school number one. Or you want to be the, the, the preferred choice. You don't want to be number one. You are not a very big school or big university, but you want to be the choice. Develop long-term goals and plans. When you, when you implement a change, the obstacles are there. We saw on the earlier slide. But if you do a plan and, and uh, share information, this one, and share information you know, Slowly but surely, your idea will be bought. They will say, okay, let's try it. I think it'll work out. So you have got provide even the tools and training. This is the example of the uh, information technology. If you want people to use a lot of IT, you must give them the tools, give them the training. 
even reward the new behaviors. Give them an acknowledgement and say, wow, Department A, they have implemented the change and they're doing so well. Give them an announcement, give them a certificate, some kind of this one. Celebrate success and accomplishments. And then prepare people for the next change. Always tell your staff that whatever we have now can change any time. Because if you know about pastel factors, have we done pastel, political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental factors, all this can force you to change, you know. The government might say, um, you must use technology. The government might say, you must have outdoor classes. You must have uh, non-stop training for the teachers. So prepare people for change, okay? And then you provide a direction. A leader provides a direction. Guide them, be with them, uh, handhold them so that they see it through. Encourage teamwork, encourage personal reflection. Reflection means thinking. At the end of the day, every day, top managers will sit down with a book, and they will start reflecting on what did they do the whole day. They met two staff, they went out for one appointment, they read a very interesting article and they want to share it with uh, their staff. You must reflect. You cannot just go on day by day without knowing what good things happened the previous day. All right? And then um, track activities. When you implement, track it. Find out whether it's working. And then you can set short-term goals, meaning uh, here you will develop long-term, but the setting of short-term is, we'll give you two weeks to learn it up. We'll give you one month to, to become good in, in the technology. But a long-term is something more permanent. And then question four, how do you motivate staff? So I have marked here section eight, session seven. There's one topic on leadership and managing change. Read that up. It doesn't mean that you need to answer all the questions directly from the materials. The materials are there for you to have access so that you don't have to go and search all over the place. But if you do find something interesting uh, that is relevant and can be used, why not? Yeah. So these are all the motivation theories, uh, which uh, you'll cover in this module, you'll cover in other modules. Some items are repeated a few times because you must know them. And if you learn it once, it's probably going to be forgotten. And then there's some process theories of motivation. All right. So I won't explain them here because you need to go and read it up and see what is relevant, what is suitable to implement the change. And finally, the fifth question is, what change strategy would you use for a smooth implementation? So in section eight, session seven, there's one um, journal on managing change at universities. So from university, you try to modify it and pick up what is suitable for maybe a school, what is suitable for your level of uh, business that is being conducted. And then you can also do uh, read up on models of organizational change all right i've given a few here which you can use so you will see that you need about 800 words per question and if i were a student like you i love to do many questions because my answer needs to be short if i give you one question and tell you write four thousand words I think it's going to be a little bit more stressful because you need to search for a lot of information. Okay, 
Right, let's do question five. Any any questions from you? Question four, you won't have, you need to cover these areas. But look at how you can motivate staff. You can read other books, materials, journals to see. Uh, but try to use a theory yeah, because your program is a doctorate program. And then on this one, I've given you three topics, three materials here for you to read and try and come up. Now, remember that the materials you refer to, if you were to copy and paste it into your assignment, that is known as plagiarism. And plagiarism is a very serious offense. So you are required to copy it, but reword it. There's something called paraphrasing, where you will rewrite it in your own phrase, but it means the same thing. And yet in bracket, you can put down that person's name. McGregor's Theory X and Theory Y, 1960. So you won't put Theory X and Y, you say McGregor, 1960. Maslow, which one did you read? Was it 1943 or was it 1954? All right. Uh, Adam 1963 for this one if you chose this so try to get academic content for for your research work okay um, okay so before I end I want to do a Q&A but before I do the Q&A can you go back to your email your email there is a link a Google form a survey form I'd like you to go to that uh, link, click it, and just do an evaluation. Do an evaluation uh, to give us feedback. Thank you. 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 Thank